Would you believe me if I told you I have never bought a brand new kitchen table or dining table in my entire life? Well, it's true. And I'm going to show you why you never need to buy brand new tables ever again. You can take stuff that you find for cheap or that you already have and make it look gorgeous. So these table makeovers start right now. I'm starting with my most dramatic dining table makeover, in my opinion. We had this table with this glass inlay and wanted to make it more modern. This is back before I used to use power tools, so my husband helped with this as well as his friend. This table actually belongs to Maggie, who works with me. You guys have probably seen her here on my channel um, and on my Instagram, and so we made over this dining table for her because it's her grandmother, so it had sentimental value, but it looked really dated with the glass inlay. So I chose a cool um, horizontal pattern for both of the big sides of the table and then the middle are just vertical slats. And once we got everything assembled and in, I just used a wood filler to fill up any of the gaps. I let that wood filler dry overnight because there was a ton of it. And then I used my Rotex sander to smooth everything out before I started painting. To stain these boards, I used a really pretty beige called Farmhouse Beige from Jolie Paint. I made a wash with one part water, one part paint, and applied that to all the boards. To prep these boards for the paint, I just did a slip coat of water and then put this on in little sections as I went and then take a dry lint-free cloth to wipe back any of the excess. I'm painting the base a different color, so I'm not being super careful with getting this on the edges because it's gonna be painted over anyways. This table had a super slick surface, so before I added my paint to the apron and the base, I used a 220 sandpaper just to scuff sand the whole entire base. And after I did that, I just gave it a good cleaning with some soap and water to remove any grease or dust. So I chose to paint this apron white. Um, it's called Gesso White, and it's a beautiful off-white. Uh, to have contrast on the table to make it look more farmhouse. If I was going to do this today, I probably would do less of a farmhouse look. Um, but we've actually made over this dining room a second time <laughs> since I've done this table. So I'm going to show you how this will fit like in any space. It's not necessarily going to look farmhouse if you do this. It just depends on how you decorate it. But we painted the whole apron white, um, of course, taped off those inlays to protect them. Uh, just got the table all ready and clean and sanded down to add my varnish. So I use the clear varnish to protect this table because it's going to give you a long lasting finish. You could also seal with wax, but when it comes to dining tables, I usually like to use a clear coat varnish like this. The Jolie one is water-based and it was really easy to use. It does have a pretty strong odor though, so you do have to ventilate when you're using this indoors. Um, and I'm using a synthetic brush to put this on and sanding in between coats for a smooth finish. And just to remind you, this is what we started off with. And then here is the finished look. I love this table. And at the time, her dining room was very farmhouse. You can see I had that dresser for her that I had done as well. Well, we gave this whole room a makeover last summer. I redid her dresser to do it black and sophisticated. So we gave the whole room a more modern classic look, but the table still fits in really beautifully. I like using really neutral colors on a table like this because it, with the decor, it did lean farmhouse, but now that we've made over that dining room, it looks completely different and really contemporary and fits in the space. So this will always be one of my favorite tables that I've done. Okay, next up is this game table from the 80s <laughs> that I did for a friend. This is back when I first started going full time on YouTube. So it's been like three or four years since I've done this makeover. And I know most people don't have a game table, but obviously you can apply all these techniques to um, just making over a dining table or a kitchen table. I don't know many people who are fans of orange oak, so this is always a great thing to update. I sanded the finish off the top with a 60 grit and a 150 grit sandpaper, and then I'm using this water-based stain by General Finishes. This color is called Greystone, and it's a little brown with a little gray mixed in. It does look pretty orange when you're putting it on, but it is because you're making the wood wet again. As it dries down, that orange really disappears. I like using water-based stains because they have less odor, they're safer to use, and then your rags are not gonna be flammable when you're done as well. I would recommend using a water-based wood conditioner. Here I did not, and you can see I have a little bit of an uneven rustic finish, which lends to farmhouse, but if I was gonna do this today, I would definitely use a, a wood conditioner first. 
To make this go a little bit faster, we painted the base and I used Gesso White the same way I used on the dining table. Um, you could paint this in any color or you could strip it down and stain the whole thing, but that was going to take a long time. So we decided to do a two-tone finish on this. To seal the tabletop, I used General Finish's High Performance Flat. This is a water-based top coat that is really flat. It dries crystal clear. It doesn't yellow your wood, so it's not going to bring any of those orange tones back. Um, I do about three coats on the tabletop here to protect it, letting it dry about two to four hours in between. Um, and then I did a second coat on the base. I think I only ended up doing two coats on the base. I can't remember, but sometimes when you're using white, you have to do three. Um, for your second coat of your top coat, you're just going to sand it very lightly with a 220 sanding pad and then put your additional coats on. And like I said, I did three coats of that. And then I decided to seal the bottom um, with wax just because back in the day, I used to use wax a lot and I like the finish of wax because it doesn't yellow white paint at all. If you put this, um, the general finishes top coat on top of this, I've done that before, but it can yellow over time over paint. So here I just sealed this um, with the wax and being on the base, it's not going to get as much use as the top. So just to remind you, here is what it looked like when we started out. And it's definitely more orange in person than it is in this dark basement shot. But this is what it looked like after um, so fresh and beautiful and fit in uh, my friend's space a lot better. You could do a lot of different combinations on here. If you're not into this farmhouse look, you could paint the base black and you could have the wood tone be a little less gray. So there's lots of options that you can do here. Since this was a game table, I had to refinish inside of here where these poker chips are. There's no way I was going to be able to sand down this finish here. So I was able to use that water base stain and just go over the existing finish and it just tones it down a little bit. So that's an option for doing a whole tabletop as well. If I was going to do this table today, I probably would do the base in a darker color just to give it a little bit more of a modern feel. And I probably would do a stain that is a little less gray than this. I just don't really like those gray tones as much, maybe something a little bit more natural or a little bit more warmer. It's still a beautiful table though, and a pretty color and definitely looks way better than that orange oak. I always get tons of questions on this video about did I make over those chairs? I did not make over those chairs. They seemed like too big of an undertaking for me and I they just seemed too dated for me to make over. So we did order some plain chairs and painted them and stained them to match this. Next up is my current kitchen table that I got from someone in my neighborhood for free. I literally pulled this off the side of the road um, and I sanded off the top and I gave it a sun bleach stain. This is actually an oil-based stain and this is probably one of the last times that I ever did a table with an oil-based stain. Um, I wanted to give it like a gray um, sun bleached look and I really loved this color back then. Honestly, looking at the before of this table, I probably would have just kept it that way if we were in today, but I refinished this like six or seven years ago. Um, and my style back then was really farmhouse. Um, so I did the top in the sun bleached. And then I painted the base with Annie Sloan chalk paint in old white. And I really, really, really distressed the apron up. And I actually didn't even seal the apron because I wanted it to be super rustic and super farmhousey. Um, this was how I used to do all my furniture, you guys, just really, really super distressed. That is why I have the name Pretty Distressed. Um, this is the same top coat, this General Finishes High Performance Flat that I used in the last makeover that I showed you. It's just this, this makeover is so old that the can used to be green like that, but now the can is blue if you're looking for it. Um, again, it's just one of my favorite top coats for a tabletop. It holds up really well, but it's water-based and it's not going to yellow or change your color at all. So here's the before, which I actually <laughs> really like, but it was beat up. It was beat up and had crayon and marker and scratches in it and stuff. So it needed to be redone. Um, and this is the final look in my old house in Illinois. Oh my gosh, it's so fun to see that old house. We haven't lived there in five years. I know this highly distressed look is not for everyone, but I really loved the look of this table in my house for years. And I just recently made it over again last December. So let's take a look at that one. So this is a gorgeous table, all wood, um, and I was really over <laughs> the farmhouse look. As you guys know, if you've watched my videos, I've been taking farmhouse out of my house for the past two years. I, I still love it. Do not get me wrong. I'm not coming for farmhouse, especially if you live in a rural area and you really do have a farmhouse. Like It's still a beautiful style, but I just wanted to make this modern to fit with my new style I have going in my house. So I stripped back all the paint, the old stain I had on it, and I used a 
natural stain that is just going to make this look just beautiful and natural. So it's not as warm as the original, original version you saw me make over at first. Um, this was really easy. I just used a water-based stain after stripping all the existing finish. You will notice in this one, I have actually two really nice sanders. And my friend Maggie, who I did her table in the first makeover, she helped me sand this down. So the majority of this project was sanding down. And because I do have those nice sanders, it went a lot faster, but you can get it done with the orbital sander, just like I had at the beginning. You don't need a super fancy sander to start doing this stuff. And I ended up sealing it with a Dixie Belle Gator High. This is a really protective water-based finish as well um, that is water repellent. So it's really good for kitchen tables like this. And I'm doing this top coat with the sponge, which is very similar to the foam brush I've been using. That's my favorite way to top coat a table. You can definitely use a synthetic brush as well. And I did that here on the sides because that was a little bit easier. So you can really use any tool. It's up to you. You can test them both out and see which one works better for you. And I did a really light sanding in between coats and did three coats on the top and two coats on the apron. And to make the hardware match the new color, I added a little bit of bronze gilding wax to it. Each of these table makeovers has their own full video, so I will make a playlist for you if you're wanting more details on any of the tutorials. So here's what it looked like before the farmhouse table, and now I love the new color on here, and it fits really beautifully into my new decor style in my home. I love the new look of this table. No, I still haven't gotten new chairs for it. I still really need to do that, and I still wanna change the light in this space, but. I'll get there eventually one day. The next table makeover I have to share with you has also been redone two times. This was my husband's grandma's dining table and one of the first things I ever painted in a farmhouse white style and I redid it recently for my dining room makeover and this was waxed so I used some alcohol to break down that wax before I started adding the new paint to it. Cleaned it off and this was a really textured finish so I used an orbital sander just to smooth out the surface a little bit and it was really slick so it's going to give something um, give the paint a little bit of teeth to stick to. So I'm just getting that dust off. And then I removed the paneling under the table here because it was really dated. It had like a daisy on it. So by removing it, it made it look a little bit more like a modern table. I chose a dark color for this table. It's a black, but it's a blue black. So it's almost like a really, really deep navy just to give it a little bit more of an interest to not just be a stark black. I really had no other option but to repaint this table because it is not made out of real wood. It had a laminate top that doesn't even have a wood veneer on it. So I painted about two coats, did really great coverage, and I just had to use a little artist brush to get into the lip of the apron here. Um, and then I actually sealed this table with clear coat and flat because I prefer a flat finish. Um, and since this is a dining table, I don't really need a super protective top coat because we hardly use this. We just use this um, every time we have company or if we're hosting a holiday. When I'm using a dark color like this, I do mix in a little bit of that paint just to help with the hazing of the top coat. And um, I usually use a tablecloth on here when we're eating and stuff. So I'm not so concerned about having a super protective finish in, on here as I am about it looking good. <laughs> So this made a really dramatic difference in what the table looked like, brought a lot of sophistication to the room, and it ended up being the first thing I did for the entire dining room makeover, which you guys may have caught here on my channel, but I painted the whole room. I redid my hutch as well. I sold my little um, dresser in the corner there, and I just love the new look of this. I have a full video as well of this whole dining room makeover if you want to know all the decor and the light and the paint and everything that I used in this space to update it is available. I wish I had some video footage of the first time I made over this table. It was one of the first things I made over and I was really proud of it. Um, I can't believe I was able to make it over again to fit my space. I thought I was gonna have to get rid of this, um, but my husband's really excited that we were able to keep it and give it a new look and hopefully we'll be able to keep it for a few more years. And obviously with this dining table, I did get new chairs for it as well. I'm not opposed to making over chairs for tables, but it's just, I don't find that you're saving that much money because of the effort that goes into redoing chairs. They take a long time. It usually takes me like two hours per chair if I'm doing it by hand. If you are gonna do chairs, I recommend getting a sprayer and figuring out how to use a sprayer. That is gonna save you a lot of time. Um, 
chairs are a lot of work. I just don't want to sugarcoat it. So personally for me, I just don't do them anymore. I have one more makeover that I want to share with you. It is not a table, but I have used this technique on a table and I'm going to be demonstrating it here on a little end table. Okay, this is for my non-experienced DIYers that do not want to sand. Um, back in the day, I did not have a sander, nor did I really like sanding that much. And this is one of my most famous makeovers, and I've used this uh, technique on a table before. I think I have a blog post on it. I just don't have a video. Um, and you take this oil-based gel stain, and you can just paint it on top of a surface that has not been stripped down. Depending on how many coats you do, you won't see a lot of that wood grain, but it will look more like a stain than a paint does. Um, I had to wait to let this dry 72 hours to be able to put this water-based top coat on it. This is that high-performance flat. Oil and water don't mix, so you have to make sure that the oil is completely dry before you add this water-based top coat. And then I painted the base with the Annie Sloan chalk paint in old white. And then I ended up sealing it with the same top coat too. And this didn't yellow, but it definitely could <laughs> yellow over time. And if you're worried about it, you could just seal it with wax like I did in the beginning of the video. But I love this look. It is a really classic and traditional look, so it would go with a lot of different styles. I hope these dining table makeovers inspire you that you can take something you currently have or something that you find really cheap at the thrift store and make it over and have it look beautiful for your space. We'll see if I can make it another 20 years without buying a dining table. I hope that I can. You can find these full videos down in the description box if you want some more detail on how I did these. Um, you can put any questions you have in the comment box. I really appreciate you guys being here and I will see you guys for another video soon.